praise God. Are you there in Mark chapter 11? Last week we talked about being authorized by Jesus Christ and being powered by the Holy Ghost. When something happens, when someone uh, gets healing from God, when someone gets a miracle, how many of you know it's the power of the Holy Spirit? It's the power of the Holy Spirit, but we're authorized to come in the name of Jesus. We show up in the name of Jesus and then the power of the Holy Spirit flows through our lives. And the power of God, the anointing, it's the, it's the power to get the job done. Amen. If people are hurting, the power of God shows up to bring health and life and peace inside their lives. Amen. When someone is, is, is uh, maybe they're lost, a word of knowledge might, might show up to give them direction and wisdom. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is working. When you read the book of Acts, I encourage every one of you to read the entire book of Acts, but that book of Acts has not stopped being written. It's still writing. It's not the Acts of the Apostles or what they did. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit did through the Apostles. Amen. Well, you're, you're men and women of God. The Holy Spirit is working through your life. He ain't done with you yet. So that book is not finished written. It's still being written every day when you allow the Holy Spirit to move through your life. That book is being written. Amen. So uh, this, is, this is how we walk. We come representing Jesus Christ, but then the power of God flows through our life. It's the, it's the acts of the, of the Holy Spirit through our life. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is the one that, that heals. The Holy Spirit is the one that, that delivers. The Holy Spirit is the one that sets free, and, he, and Jesus gets all the credit. He gets all the glory for what the Lord does through us. Amen. Is it okay if Jesus gets all the glory through your life? Amen. Amen. It's okay if you never remember who I am or my name. It's all right if you don't ever even remember me even speaking. But if God is the one that heals you, God's the one that sets you free, God's the ones that bless you, give him all the glory, not Kevin. Amen. It's Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the only one that matters. He's the only name that matters. Amen. Now, I want to share a word with you because I believe that you all are extremely blessed. Amen. You're extremely blessed by God because God brought you to a place like faith pleases God. You're extremely blessed by God because God allowed you to watch the video program from this ministry. And I believe that God wants to raise you up in this time, in this season to be used by him. Amen. To be used by the Holy Ghost. I believe that God wants to send you to places you never even thought of going. To do the work of the Lord. You're not there to show up to, to do something in your name. You're there to show up and do something in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And there's going to be miracles that are going to take place through your life. There's going to be signs and wonders. Everybody say signs and wonders. Just get used to, to expecting signs and wonders, amen. Tell your neighbor, I expect signs and wonders to show up. Amen. They're going to happen. It's going to happen, amen. Praise the Lord. You're anointed. You're anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has put his power upon you. You're anointed, amen. So don't get discouraged when you face a mountain. Don't get discouraged when you face a situation. There's power upon you to move every mountain. Amen. Amen. And today I want to prepare you to be used more by God. Amen. I want to teach you the difference of praying and speaking. Amen. Are you there in Mark chapter 11, verse 23? Jesus said, for surely I say to you, Whoever, that means you too, says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Verse 24, therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. Amen. Here Jesus, he had just finished walking with his disciples. He was a little hungry. He saw a fig tree. 
this tree is supposed to have some fruits on it, and there was no fruit for him. He looked at that tree, and he cursed it. He commanded that tree to die. Walked away. Later on, when they showed up and they walked past the same tree that only a little while earlier they had walked by, that, that tree had withered away. The disciples went to Jesus. They said, Jesus, the tree, it, it died. And then Jesus began to teach them, speak to that mountain, command it to get up and go, and it will obey. Amen. And then he began to, to, to talk about prayer. See, he had two messages in this, in this teaching. He was teaching us how to command, and he was teaching us how to ask. The Bible says that Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the enemy. Amen. The Bible talks about how Jesus came to bring restoration upon the work, those who had, had, been, had been overtaken and being destroyed by the devil. Jesus came to give them life. Amen. So Jesus was there to turn back the works of the devil. There was a man with leprosy. He cried out to Jesus. He said, Jesus, have mercy. He said, if you're willing, heal me. Jesus looked at the man and said, I'm willing. He touched him. And that leprosy came off of that man's body. And instantly he was healed. Who put that leprosy upon him? That's the works of the enemy. That's the works of the devil. Jesus was turning back the destruction of the enemy and bringing life to that person right then. When he went to the cross, Jesus came to turn back the works of the devil of death working in our life. He came to restore us back to the Father, to rise us up and to make us not just healed people, but he came to make us sons of God. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I'm a son of God. Amen. So Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And he, what he did was he operated in twofold. He operated in commanding the things that did not belong to go. Leprosy did not belong upon that body, so he commanded that leprosy to go. Amen. Amen. Those who were deaf, who, 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 were, who were blind, blindness did not belong upon that body, so he commanded that blindness to go. Those who were possessed by the devils, the devils did not belong upon the life of those people, so he spoke to the devil, he said, go, and they had to go. He commanded the things that needed to go, to go. And he commanded the things that needed to come, to come. He operated in this authority of commanding. Everybody say commanding. So he operated this authority of commanding, commanding the things that needed to be moved, to move, the things that needed to go, to go, the things that needed to come, to come. What belonged, that was rightfully, the, the, what was rightfully life, what belonged to the people, those were the things that would come. What did not belong upon their body, what did not belong upon their, their lives, what did not belong upon their mind, he commanded those things to go and they had to leave. Amen. Amen. And that's the ministry that Jesus has given us. The Word of God says greater things we will do. Jesus showed up. A dead man named Lazarus was dead in the grave. He had been dead for three days. They said he smells already. Jesus said, just go and roll that stone away. Lazarus, come forth. And the one that was dead in the grave came out of the grave, hopping alive. He commanded life back into the body. Amen. And Jesus says, greater, 
greater things we will do. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to do greater things. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to do greater things than the things that even Jesus did. Oh, I didn't hear a lot of people say it. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to do greater things than even Jesus did. Amen. Say it and believe it. Amen. Because everything that Jesus did was not in the power of him. It was in the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through him. Amen. That same Holy Spirit that moved through Jesus is the same Holy Spirit that you have and that I have. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> great power is upon our life. So I'm ready to do greater things. Amen. I'm looking. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. I'm expecting great things to happen. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I command things now in the name of Jesus. And I expect devils to go. Amen. Amen. I, spe I expect sickness and disease to leave. I expect those who, who might be battling through cancer, I command that cancer just to wither away and to die from its root, roots. And for that body to be completely healed. Why? Because that's the work of the devil. And Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And the same power that moved through Jesus to destroy the works of the devil as he walked on this world is the same power that he has given to us. Jesus says, I'm going to the Father, but I will send you another, a comforter, a counselor. And that was the promise of the Holy Ghost. Jesus went to be with the Father, but he didn't leave us orphans. He sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there's this power that's working in us. So everywhere I go, I'm loaded, I'm equipped, I'm anointed. Hallelujah. Just show me what needs to happen and we're going to get the job done. Amen. 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 Now these are the works of the Holy Spirit through our lives. Kevin Ortiz cannot heal a cockroach, but the Holy Spirit can heal everyone. Amen. Amen. I didn't come to lift up the name of Kevin. I came to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't come to represent Kevin. I came to represent Jesus Christ. So when I show up in a place, I come, I yield myself to the Lord. I surrender myself to God. I'm being led by the Spirit of God. And as I am there, the Spirit of God is the one that begins to flow through me. He might give me a word. He might tell me about something that's happening to someone. He might tell me, I want, I want you to, 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 to pray over this person. He might say, I want you, I want you to cast. You know, I could, I, there's times I'll be standing in front of someone who's going through a need, and I recognize that, that that problem in their life is not really what they think it is, but it's a demon that's been manifesting upon them. I get a discernment of spirits. And the Holy Spirit would say, I want you to cast that out. So I, I would look at the, that, at that devil and, I, and the, oh, this holy anger rises up in me. When I look at people that are being depressed by the devil, there's a holy anger that rises up in you. And I'll look at it in the name of Jesus. I command you, I command you to get out. And he has no choice but to obey. He has to go. I'm not wrestling in the physical hold, 10 people holding down one little woman because the devil's manifesting. No, that is not the power of God that I know. That ain't the Jesus that I know. The power of God that, that we walk in, the anointing that we live in, doesn't have to wrestle in the physical with devils. We just speak a word and it has to obey. Amen. Say, I command it to go. Say it loud. I command it to go. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, whoever speaks to that mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt it in his heart, it shall be done. 
We've been given the power to command. 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 Now, this power to command, it's not there to command people. You could command devils to get out. You command sickness to leave. The works of the devils to, to leave. Amen? But you can't command a person. Amen. You could command the blindness of a person who doesn't want to hear from God or who is, it's like the Bible talks about that, 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 that unbelievers, they, they walk in this, this veil that they cannot see the glorious light of the gospel. So when you're believing God for someone that you love to get saved, you should be commanding that veil to be lifted so they can see the light of Jesus Christ. I command that veil to go in Jesus' name. I'm not, I'm not at war with sin. Sin is dead and it's underneath our feet. I'm not chasing after every act of the devil. I'm there just to get rid of the devil and there's no more act. Hello? We got so many people that are saying, oh, they're doing this and they're doing that. And we got to pray for this and we got to pray for that. No, just tell the devil to go and the people will stop acting that way. Come on now. Amen. Some, some people are pressed with anger and they're so angry all the time. They're so angry. You know, it's not because that person's an angry person. It's because there's a spirit, a devil there of anger. Just command that devil to leave your house and watch how your house has perfect peace. Hello? So I take authority. I command, when I stand in that position, I, I stand representing Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I command that devil to leave right now in Jesus' name, and it has to leave. I command that sickness to go right now, and it has to go. Nowhere in the word of God does it say that we pray for the sick. It does not say that. When we follow Jesus, Jesus didn't stop and say, okay, disciples, I want every disciple to gather around this person, lay hands, bow your head. No, there was a sick person, Jesus would touch them. Jesus would speak to them. Many times, there's also unusual things that happen. Somebody, one man was blind, so Jesus said, okay, we're going to have to create some new eyes. Give me some mud. Spit in the spit in the dirt, cray mud, put it up on his his eyes, and he was healed. Amen. Amen. So we walk in this authority, we walk in this authority of commanding. We don't pray for the sick, we command the sickness to go. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we, we command the sickness to go. In a couple of weeks, we're going to have our healing Sunday. When those that come up, we will have the oil upon our hand. That represents, that's just a, uh, that just represents the, the anointing of God. It's not the anointing of God. The Holy Spirit is with us. That's the power of God. That's the anointing. But we, we will anoint with oil. But we're not going to pray for you to be healed. We're going to command that sickness to go. That's how we stand. That's how we walk. That's how we move. We are being led by Jesus Christ. We are speaking to that mountain to go, and guess what? It has to obey. Amen. Amen. So when I command, when you command, we are commanding the things to happen that were promised by the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God is our playbook. It's the one that gives us the rules of what belongs to us and what doesn't belong to us. If it doesn't belong to you and it comes to your way and you don't want it, command it to go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you don't have it and the word of God says it's yours, command it and speak to it and believe that you receive it. Amen. Amen. So we walk by the word of God. The Bible says, resist the devil and he shall flee. So we resist. We, 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 we stand up and we tell the devil, get out and he has to go. Amen. So we're operating in that, in that, in that grace. We're, stopped, we're operating in that anointing of commanding things to go, things to come. There are times, I remember my, my father used to talk about how, uh, how he would speak. He would go outside and he would just speak to the north, the south, the east, and west. And he would speak prosperity to come in. Yeah. 
When was the last time you stood on the outside of your house and spoke to the north, south, east, and west and said, I speak to prosperity to come into this place in Jesus' name? Amen. When was the last time you showed up in your home and you said, I speak the peace of God in this place in Jesus' name? He took authority. He would speak these blessings. I remember this one evangelist showed up and he said, he said, Kevin, I just need to tell you something. I saw this angel walking on the side of the road and he was so tired. He looked a little beat up. So I pulled over to talk to this angel and I said, I said, what's going on? Why are you so tired? He said, because that Pastor Carlos Ortiz at Faith Please God Church works me too hard. <laughs> Do you know there's angels? There are more angels than devils. So many times we go to church and all church wants to talk is about the devil, the devil, the devil. I ain't talking about the devil other than get him out. He don't belong. Amen. So when we show up, we clean house. You might have a, a, a loved one, a child that seems like they're walking away from the way you raised them, getting lost in some of the things, uh, some of the temptations of their eyes. Just begin to speak to that devil to let their, let, to take his hands off of your loved one in Jesus' name. Just begin to speak. He belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Declare your area of, 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 of authority. Amen. They're your children given to you by God. Amen. And no devil can touch them without going through you. Amen. Stand in the gap and stand your ground. You're anointed and you're empowered in Jesus' name. Amen. My mother, she was, my, my oldest brother, uh, Carlos Jr., he, he bought a motorcycle. And my mom did not want him to ride the motorcycle. So the motorcycle was parked in the front yard. And when, uh, when, my brother was asleep. My mom went out there and she put her hands on the motorcycle and she said, I command this thing not to work in Jesus' name. <laughs> went inside the house, did just her normal things. My, my brother woke up getting ready to go to work. As he walked out, he got on the motorcycle and that thing would not start up. <laughs> my brother, not even knowing what had happened, he comes into the house all angry. He looks at my mom and he says, I know you prayed over this thing. <laughs> I know you're the one that, 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 got, that, that, that is holding this thing from working. So, so will you let it go so I can leave? So my mom says, okay, I release it in Jesus' name. He goes outside and it started right off and he left. <laughs> Amen. You are anointed. Praise the Lord. You know, when I go on a flight, I speak over, the, over the, the plane. Before I get on the plane, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this plane in Jesus' name. That this plane will take me to where I go, I'm going and I will have a safe, easy trip with no delays and no turbulence. I speak, I speak that the, the pilots are going to operate and they're going to be the best pilots in the air. Amen. And I even declare, I say, Father, where you are taking me, I promise I will come back to this place and give you the glory for what you've done for me over there. I make an appointment of returning. So I get in the plane and I just have this perfect peace. I know the plane's going to work perfectly. They say, why are you? Because I took authority over it in the name of Jesus. Not my power, but the power of the Holy Spirit in my life has taken authority. I've been given that privilege. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say, I command it in Jesus' name. Now, there's a second part to the scripture we just read. Verse 24. Go there. Mark 11, 24. It says, therefore, I say to you, Whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Amen. This is a second part of this, this, this scripture that Jesus gave. The first scripture was teaching us how to command. The second one was teaching us how to ask. When we go to God... And we ask, we ask God for the things that we need that we do not have. We ask God for the things that we need that we do not have. 
If I was sick, I do not go to God and ask him to heal me because the word of God says that I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. I already got healing upon my life. Amen. I ask God for the things that I do not have, not for the things that I do have. I've been given this table of grace. I've been given healing. I've been given peace. I've been given joy. I've been given provision. I've been given wisdom. I've been given knowledge. I've been, give, I've been given faith. I've been given even miracles. So I'm not asking God for the things that he's already given me. When I go to God, I'm asking him for the things that I do not have. So hear Jesus saying, when, when, when you go and you pray, you ask of the Father and you believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. So I'll go to God and I'll ask him for mercy. Maybe there's a loved one that doesn't know Jesus. Maybe there's a friend that's going through a difficult time in their life. So I could go to God, my daddy, my father, understand this is a relationship. It's not a stranger going to, entering into a house that he doesn't belong, no. This is a relationship. I'm a son of God. I'm not going to, to someone I do not know and doesn't know me. I'm going to my father. And I'm asking him for help for something that he hasn't already given me. So I might go and I say, Father, my friend is going through an issue in their life. I ask you to help them in Jesus' name. And my prayers are directed in that area through my relationship with the Lord, my relationship with the Father. Jesus said, go to the world and make disciples of all nations. I have a question for you today. Are you a disciple? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Has someone walked with you and taught you the foundations of Christianity? Have prayed you through, the, through whatever struggles you might have been going through in the past? I want to encourage you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I invite you to be part of our program. We have a new program that is designed to raise you up to be the great man or the great woman of God. I believe that God's anointing is upon this ministry and that the Lord will raise you up and you'll become great in the things of God. The anointing of God will come upon you. You'll see that God has a great plan and purpose for your life. So you don't have to struggle no more. We want to walk with you. We want to encourage you in the things of God. Come and become a, become a disciple today. Call that number that's on the screen, 956-412-5600. Become a disciple. We're waiting for you. We want to walk with you in Jesus' name.